click that subscribe button while you're here. Enjoy the video. Thanks. There's a first time for everything. Elijah's first mention in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. We can find evidence of Elijah all throughout the Old Testament, but you can also find him mentioned in the New Testament as well. Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be due or rain, but according to my word. This is the first time Elijah is mentioned in the word of God. He just suddenly appears out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. There's no mention of his parents. There's no mention of his early life. It simply said he was a Tishbite that was of the inhabitants of Gilead. That's all it says. Nothing before then. So when he shows up, he don't just show up. He shows up with a bang, so to speak. He goes and he prophesies to King Ahab. And he says, there ain't going to be no rain till I say there ain't going to be no rain. That's a bold statement to go and be making to a king. Especially a king like Ahab. Ahab, Elijah walks in. This man, that's an unknown. Come on. He's an unknown. Don't nobody know about Elijah yet. He's just a, he's just a prophet till then. He goes into the king's court, Brian, and he said, you know what? Ain't going to rain till I say it's going to rain and walks out. Whoa. Are you kidding me? But you see, here's what I figured out about Elijah. Elijah had a relationship with God. Come on. He had a relationship with, with God so close that he knew that he could speak in faith and God would back him up. Yes. Thank you. Ah, you got to understand this this morning. You see, Elijah didn't say the Lord said it wasn't going to rain. He said I said it wasn't going to rain. And his experience with God, his relationship with God was so close that God backed up Elijah what Elijah said. And it didn't rain for three and a half years because of what Elijah said. Let me ask you a question. How much faith would you have? How much faith in God would you have if you knew God would back up everything you said? I wish somebody helped me preach this morning. I said, how much faith in God would you have if you knew that God would back it up when you spoke something in faith? You see, we lack faith a lot of times because we don't really know if God's going to do it. Right. Yeah. Come on. That's right. We don't really know if God's really going to do it, so we don't speak a lot of things that we ought to be speaking. The Bible said, and I, I, I think about Sister Teresa every time I go through this scripture, but the Bible said, Paul said, you, you, you say things that are, to speak things that are not as though they were. Yes. In other words, you got to speak in faith. You speak that God is, and yes. God is going to, and Amen. God is doing right now, and this is what God is going to do. And let me tell you something. Elijah was a man that did that, and God said, I love Elijah. He's with yes. me. He's doing everything right. Guess what? I'll just back up what he said. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let me tell you something, folks. That takes relationship. I said that takes relationship. You will not make it if you don't have a relationship with you. Amen. Amen. And a relationship is more than just coming to church on, on a certain day. Amen. Relationship is more than just coming during the week. Relationship is more than just sitting and listening to the preacher. Uh, relationship is more than singing a song. Relationship is more than just raising your hand. Relationship, and I'll go to, relationship is more than shouting. Uh, Come on. Anybody can raise their hands. Anybody can sing a song. Anybody can dance a jig. Anybody can get up and quote scripture. But let me tell you where relationship comes in. Relationship comes in right here. Right. Relationship yes. comes in right here. Yes. That's where relationship comes in. Right. Relationship comes with talking to God and getting on your knees and your face before God and pouring out everything that's in you before God and letting Thank God you, come into your life and speak to you those 
those things that he wants to do in your life. Amen. Elijah had faith. And he knew God was going to back him up. But he still had to be obedient. Because right after that, God says, okay, now you spoke this. You've opened your big mouth. Now you've got to go somewhere. Right. You see, Elijah, God never left Elijah alone. He never left Elijah by himself. Because as soon as Elijah speaks that, God said, now you better go down and get to the brook Cherith. Yeah. Why do you think God commanded him to go down there? Because Elijah just went and said, Ahab, this is what it's going to do. And, he, and, and God knew that Ahab was coming after him. And he said, now i got to go hide, you big mouth. That's right. Come on. Amen. See, God wouldn't have had to hit him if Elijah hadn't went in there and said nothing. Uh, true. But see, let me tell you something. Elijah knew what was going on in the king's court. Yeah. Elijah knew what was going on in the land. And he knew that there was some things that was going on that wasn't like God. They were against God. There was idol worship. There was bell worship. And Elijah knew that. And when he come on the scene, he come on the scene and said, Look here, something's going to happen that's going to get your attention, Ahab. Right. Yeah. I wish something would happen to get people's attention today. I don't know how much more is going to have to happen for people to wake up. Come on. How, what else is it going to take for folks to wake up? We've had a virus that's killed thousands and thousands of people. We've had churches that shut down. We've got all, we've got so much immorality in this country that you, I, I couldn't even stand up here and, and, and begin to name it all. And where's the people of God? Just going through our little tradition of church on Sunday. Worried more about if we can get here and, and make sure everybody sees us than we are getting somebody else here that really needs something from God. How many people did you invite to church this week? How many people do you share the word with? How many people do you come in contact with that you know are desperate and you never said a word to them? I'm not trying to be ugly, folks. I can tell you right now, I, I met some people this week that I, sh I felt like I should have said something. And I didn't. I said, dear God, why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I going to church Sunday? Why am I getting up and preaching? Why am I getting up and singing? What, what is it all for? Have you ever just asked yourself, what's it all for? Come on, folks. Right. The enemy will get you to that place where you'll be in your mind. You'll be going, what's this all for? Right. But you see, I was reminded. I was reminded. Yes. That he that endure to the end, yes. the same shall be saved. Amen. I was reminded that God, that Jesus, when he when he told the last thing, he so told his disciples, he said, I'm going away, and I'm going That's to prepare right. you a place. And if I go away to prepare you a place, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to receive you unto myself, that where I am there, you may be also. I can't let everything else in this world distract me. And you can't let everything else in this world distract me. That's when, when we come to the house of God, we better get everything we can get. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You see, God knew Ahab wasn't going to take it very well when Elijah spoke what he spoke. So God says, I'm taking you down here to take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. Because 
Instead of me speaking, now you're speaking for me. You're my mouthpiece, so I got to take care of you. Yeah. So he tells him to go down to the brook Cherith. Listen to you, folks. Listen. He, God had ordained Elijah to go certain places and, cer and do certain things. Mm -hmm. And every place he went, God spoke to him. Now, let's ask ourselves this question. Are you in a place, am I in a place where God can not only speak to me, but speak through me? Yes. Am I in a place where God can not only speak to me, but speak through me? Amen. Are you in a place where God can not only speak to you, but through you? Because Elijah had to be in that place. And, and when he was in that place, God said, now I can work with you. And until you get ourselves, until we, until we, until we get it ourselves in that place where God says, now I can do something with you. Folks, we're just a sound and brass and tip and cymbals and we're just making noise. That's it. Wow. That's it. God always made provision for Elijah. He says, you go down by the brook and he said, I'm going to send ravens to feed you. So he ate and he drank there until the brook dried up. Yes. Come on. Yes. God always made provision, but Elijah always had to be obedient. Right. I want to tell you something this morning, church. God will make provision for us, but we've got to be willing to be obedient to what he says. Yes. That's right. Come on. Yeah. So after the brook, the Lord says, now speaks to Elijah. He says, God wants you to go to Zarephath. I got a widow woman down there that's going to sustain you. Yes. Now, here's where it gets real good, Sister Mary Jo. It, this is where it gets good. We ain't got nowhere near into Elijah yet. He says, you go down to Zarephath. He sends him from the brook because the brook's dried up because there's a famine. Remember, there ain't no rain. Yep. Oh, the, the brook only lasted so long. Listen, folks, there's some, there's some people that's, trying to, that's still trying to make it on what you got 20 years ago, and you can't do that. Come on now. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's quiet in here. I said, some people are trying to make it on what you got 20 and 30 years ago, and the brook done dried up, and you can't make it on that. You've got to have something fresh. Yes. God says, get out of the brook. You don't need to be at the brook no more. There ain't no water there. Yeah. Go to Sarah Path. Yeah. There's a widow woman. She's going to sustain you, Elijah. So here's where it gets good. He goes to the gate of the city. He sees the widow woman gathering sticks. He tells him, then he says, go in and get me some water. Remember, he, he, he's, he's thirsty. He didn't have no water. Yeah, that's right. Famine. No rain. But then he says, go fetch me a morsel of bread in your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay? She says... Look, I don't have a cake. Yep. I don't have nothing. She says, all I've got is a handful of meal yep. in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. <laughs> and I'm just getting these sticks ready so me and my son, I'm going to make a cake for me and my son and we're going to die. Yeah. Come on, that's the Bible. That's what the Bible right. said. Right. Now see, that's what she had planned. But that ain't what God had planned. Yes. Right. See, that's, right. that's what she had. She said, I'm going to make me a cake, and I'm going to make me a, 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 a little oil, and I'm, I'm going to get me a little water. I'm going to do all these things. We're going to do this, and then we're going to go back in the house. We're going to eat that, and we're going to wait on hunger to kill us because we're going to die. Right. <laughs> but see, she didn't understand that God had sent the man of provision. Yeah. Well, that's God, right. that's right. provision for her household. So let me show you what happens here. Verse 14. He says, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not be waste. He said, you got, you got to make me a cake first. Yes. You make me a cake first. How would you feel if you didn't have nothing left? Somebody shows up at your door you don't even know. It says, well, you make me something to eat. And you ain't got nothing left but just something for you and your kid. Yep. That's what happened. Uh -huh. 
pain. No rain, famine. That's strong, folks. Yes. You make me a cake first. Yeah. I wonder if she thought, well, who does he think he is? Mm-hmm. What's he mean? Make, yeah. make, make him a cake first. But I want you to understand something. You see, when, when the Spirit of God is with somebody, other people can see it on them. Right. So when Elijah comes to that door and he says, you need to do this, don't you think that woman didn't look and say, oh, okay. Yeah. See, you got to take this thing with you everywhere you go. Yeah. And if you ain't got it, you sure can't take it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I said, if you ain't got it, you sure can't take it. You see, he says, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon earth. He said, look here, you ain't going to worry about meal, you ain't going to worry about oil until rain comes. So just don't worry about that. And she went, listen to this, she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. She and he and her house did eat many days. Yes. Because, wait a minute, you, you got to get this. I'm not, I'm not saying this just because I'm the one preaching. You got to get this. She got what she needed because she obeyed what the man of God said. Yes, yes, yes. There's a lot of people that are not getting what you need and not getting any further than you're getting because you're not obeying what the man of God is saying. That's a fact. Listen. The oil will never fail you if you'll keep obeying. The oil stayed there, Sister Mary Jo, because she kept obeying the man of God. When the man of God told her to do something, she didn't ask questions. She did it. Yes. God's blessings upon her family continued until the end of the famine. Even though we're given a chance to receive a blessing from God, it's very hard to grasp that blessing and grab that chance and recognize that chance if we only focus on our present situation. How can I do this when I'm starving to death? Come on. Right. How can I just how can I make him this when I'm starving to death? Yes. That was her present situation. But see, she had to go focus past that present situation that she was having a tar- hard time with. And the reason that woman was be- able to be saved from starving to death is because she recognized an opportunity to receive a blessing from God. You see, we can never experience God's blessings if we put our focus totally on the situation we're going through right now. The opportunity to receive what God was going to give her was based on her obedience. She was in dire situation. She was in dire situation. Here's a true story. I ain't done. I ain't no more near done. Here's a true story. But y'all help me. I'll get done quicker. Here's a true story. Uh, see there? She, 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 she got that. I'll get done quicker if y'all haven't blessed him, Lord. She got it. She got it. Here's a true story about a little toddler named Frankie. He's a little boy, about three or four years old. He was a handful. All over the house. Went everywhere. One day he gets a chair and he pulls over to the window. He hides up in under the drapes, okay? His mama's looking for him everywhere. Finally she goes by him. And she sees about that much of his little legs sticking out through the drapes. Looking out the window. She goes up to him. She said, Frankie, what are you doing? He said, I got to get out of here. (laughs) 
Listen to me. Do you ever feel trapped? See, what I'm thinking happened was mama said you can't go outside. Do you ever feel trapped? Do you ever feel like that you are at the end of your rope? What do you do when you reach that point? Well, the realist would say, tie a knot and hold on. The pessimist would, would say, well, you might as well go ahead and let go because it's only going to get worse. The optimist would say, just tie another knot and keep on climbing. Come on. You see, all those statements may be true in their own way. But there's some of you that are in that very place right now. You're at the end of your rope. There's a long drop beneath where you are and where you're going to land. And you don't know what to do. The Spirit's speaking to somebody today. What do you do when you're facing problems with your children you can't solve? What do you do when your marriage is on the rocks? And waves of hopelessness is just crashing. What do you do when there's problems at work and you, and you seem like there is no way out? What do you do when you have too much month left at the end of the money? What do you do when you've laid a loved one to rest and you can't escape it? The loneliness, the pain, the agony. What do you do when your heart's broke, your dreams are shattered, your hopes have been dashed? What do you do when you're walking through a spiritual wasteland and there seems to be no way out? I don't know who reached the end of your rope this morning, but the little widow woman had reached it. She did not expect it to get any better. And then, guess what happened? It got even worse. Verse 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. He died. She, you got, see, you got to understand where this woman's at. There's a famine. She's baking a cake. We're going to die. Then God makes provision. Yep. And they're eating good. They're sustained. Then all of a sudden the provision is taken away. Even though the provision is still there. It's not taken away. But even though the provision is still there. The thing that she had prophesied to herself was going to happen. Ended up happening. Her son dies. Right. Mm. The widow had responded to the man of God. Things had been going good even during the famine. She has what she needs. And all of a sudden there's a turn in the road. Yes. Have you ever been going down and you felt like everything was going good? And the next thing you know there's a turn in the road you can't make. Yeah. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Here God had miraculously supplied her needs. Kept both her and her son alive and now her son's dead. Can you imagine what her thoughts were? Probably something like the same things that we think sometimes. God, I don't understand this. You provided me with all these blessings. Now you've taken the thing that I love the most away. It's not fair. How many of you ever looked up to heaven and said it's not fair? Oh, you ain't going to raise your hands, but I guarantee you every one of you thought it. Yep. How many of you looked up to heaven and said, why are you doing this to me? I've been faithful. I give my tithes. I come every Sunday. I do what I'm supposed to do. I don't cuss. I don't drink. I don't do all these kind of stuff. I try to live right. And I don't talk like everybody else does. And when they start telling dirty jokes, I walk away. And I, I, don't, I don't participate with all that stuff. And God, why are you doing this to me? Anybody ever been there? Say amen. 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 The longer you live, you'll get there again. Because that's what life is. 
I don't know where the woman of God was in her life. Could it be that she was more interested in the physical blessing she was getting instead of getting to know the one who was given the blessings? Relationship. I don't know about her, but we're all there. Listen to me just for a few more minutes. We all want the provision that God provides, but we don't want to put the work in to get to know the provider. Right. Come on. That's true. We want the goods. <laughs> we want the stuff. We want the candy. We just don't want to get to know the one that's supplying it all. She lashes out. Any of you ever lashed out at God? Any of you ever lashed, just lashed out at God? Sure you have. Sure you have. She lashes out at Elijah. She said, I take you in and this is what happens. So she took Elijah in. She took him in. He had a room there. Yep. I take you in and you do this to me. Why has your God done this? We had it all planned out and then you showed up, gave us a little touch of something and now look at it. We could have died together but no, now we got to die and I got to have, now he's already dead. Now I got to go through the pain of that. But even through all of that, there's a miracle in the making behind the scenes. Yes. Well, hallelujah. I wish somebody helped me preach this morning. I said even through all of that, there is a miracle in the making. And God sent me here this morning to tell one person one thing, and that is don't let go of your miracle. Even though you haven't seen it yet, don't let go of your miracle. Just says, give me the boy. Now I couldn't find any account in any of the scripture, nowhere, where at any point where anybody was ever raised from the dead till then. So what Elijah did, Sister Mary Jo, was a first in the Bible. Elijah was the first man to ever raise somebody from the dead. Listen, there was tremendous faith. But, see, nobody done it till then. He didn't have a blueprint to go by. He didn't say, well, I saw so-and-so prophet do it. I'll just say what he said. Right. You see, that's what a lot of us do sometimes. Us that have been in it all these years, we just go find something somebody else said and say, oh, that sounds good. We'll just say that. Uh, instead of getting on our knees and say, God, what about it? What do you need me to say? Uh, Come on, folks. Yes. But then Elijah knew that there was nothing impossible with God. Hallelujah. He already knew that. He takes the boy up to his room. Listen to me just one minute longer. Then he takes the boy up to his room and stretches himself out on him three times. He, the boy's laid there. Elijah lays across him, stretches his body out on his. Three times. I don't know why three times. I don't know why three times. But I prayed about it. Maybe the first time didn't work, Brian. Right? Maybe it was Elijah had to be just a little bit more persistent. I got to, mm, yeah. maybe the second time didn't work either. But maybe the third time Elijah said, look here, if you're going to back me up, you need to do it now. Right. Right. Amen. And I want you to know, if you don't get your miracle the first time you prayed, why don't you just keep on praying? Elijah takes the boy to his mother and says, 
Well, you worried about it. Here he is. Yep. Are you lying? Right. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Uh, come on, Crystal. Pay close attention to what the woman says after that, verse 24. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know thou art a man of God. And that the word of the Lord in, in thy Ooh. mouth is true. Why didn't she know it when she didn't run out of oil? How come she didn't know it when she kept on going and the meal was all still there? Huh? <laughs> it got easy to keep going to the oil barrel. Yeah. It got easy to keep going to the barrel. Yep. Since she'd already, she'd already forgot. That she, that she said, we're going to die after I make his last cake. You see, it's so easy for us after years and years and years. We, we forgot where God brought us from. Yeah. Yes, that's true. We get at ease inside. We kick back and we stretch our legs out. And we say, I got it all now. I'm good to go. Yes. She said, now by this, I know you're a man of God. I don't know why she didn't know before, but it's obvious she knows now. Church, it's time that we get the revelation of who God really is. It's time we get the revelation of who God really is. Do we believe Him to be what has, what has been preached to us all these years? Or do we believe this thing is a fairy tale and we're just coming? We either believe it or we don't. Everybody stand with me this morning. I'm almost done. I've, let me tell you something. I have got situations that I just don't know how God's going to work it out. Is there anybody else that would be brave enough this morning to say, I do too, Pastor? I've got situations that I just don't know how God's going to work out. Is anybody else with me? Now, let me go just a step further, Todd. But I'm not going to give up. And I'm not going to lose faith until it works them out. Amen. Come on. See, that's what makes you who God wants you to be. It's when you don't give up. When it didn't happen in an instant. Yes, amen. So I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep preaching. I'm going to keep praising Him. I'm going to keep doing what I know to do. And I'm going to keep holding on. Yes. And if He works it out, He works it out. But if He don't, guess what? He's still God. Yes, amen. Woo. Thank you, Lord. I'm reaching. For the Elijah faith. The Elijah faith. You go read in the book of Hebrews. The faith chapter. Hebrews 11. It mentions Elijah. All the way. Over in the New Testament. Paul goes back and mentions Elijah. God wants to help somebody this morning. Thank you. If you need to get down here to this altar. And stretch yourself out before him. The Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found.